all praise and all glory is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise and glorify Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every favor that He has blessed us with. Those that you receive and recognize, and those that you receive and yet do not recognize. It is by the ni'mat and the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are privileged to see this last Jummah in the month of Rajab. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us life, health and strength to reach the month of Ramadan inshallah. Allah describes to us in the Quran a very important distinction that we all understand as human beings. As believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَعْمَى وَالْبَصِيرُ those who cannot see, those who are blind, they are not equal to those who can see. And Allah says, وَلَا ظُلُمَاتُ وَلَا نُورُ Neither is darkness and light. They are two different, they are not equal. وَلَا ظِلُّ وَلَا الْحُرُورُ And neither is cold or hot. They are two different things. They are not equal. وَمَا يَسْتَوِي الْأَحْيَا وَلَا He says, neither is life and death. They are not equal. And Allah described these in the Quran and many other ayats in the Quran. Allah different described things in the Quran to us. لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ The people of paradise and the people of hell, they are also not equal. Allah gives the distinction of all of these things in the Quran to tell us clearly in the creation that Allah has made. Allah has made each of these things differently and Allah has purpose for everything. But in the metaphorical sense when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described in these ayats for us a very important understanding for us to learn. And he says to us in this chapter of the Quran he says وَجَاءَتْهُمْ رَسُولُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ And Allah sent messengers. Allah sent prophets. رُسُولُهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ Prophets after prophets came with clear signs. Words from Allah. Signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَبِالزُّبُورِ وَالْكِتَابِ From the Zabur and other books. Allah describes how He sent messengers to this world with guidance for our human beings to attain the path of Sirat. The path that Allah has chosen for our guidance and success in this life as human beings and the ultimate success in the life of the hereafter. We are not brought on this earth except that Allah has sent guidance for us. But further to it is what is the purpose of this guidance if we do not accept this guidance. If we do not believe in this guidance, if we do not follow this guidance, then what is the objective of all of these ayat, all of these signs? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala giving us signs is giving us an opportunity to understand what is our purpose and function as human beings that Allah has made. Apart from every creation that Allah has made, subhanallah, every creation, their function, their role, they continue to do that. The human role and function is also described by the books and the signs and the prophets that Allah has sent to us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us clearly, He says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ وَالدَّوَابِ وَالْعَنْعَامِ مُخْتَلِفٌ أَلْوَانُهَا Even amongst the creation of the animals, the human beings, وَالدَّوَابِ وَالْعَنْعَامِ مُخْتَلِفًا أَلْوَانُهَا they are different in color, different in shape, all of these things. Uniquely, Allah has made all of these things. Kadalika, and like that, Innama yakshallahu min ibadihi ulama. And like this, those who have that knowledge, looking into the creation, and not just talking about ulama, the Mufassirin mentioned, is not just talking about the alim, but talking about every one of us who Allah has given senses to would look at these things and know that they are different to each other but they all serve a function and a purpose. Just like us, our hands and our feet, they are not the same, but yet they serve a function for just a, a body. The eyes, the ears, all of these things created mukhtalifan, 
But in their difference, they're uniquely connected to give one function to a human being. And that benefit is seen and derived by this human being. Subhanallah. Mukhtalifan, different, but yet serves a cause and a purpose. Within ourselves, we see it. Within the creation of Allah, we see it. Within the function of everything that we do, Allah has created all of these things. Mukhtalifan, but yet their maqsad and their goal and their purpose and function is before our eyes. But do we recognize it? Do we recognize what is the objective of all of this? That we are also of this different nature, but Allah has made us for one thing, one ummat. We follow one book, one guidance. But yet, within ourselves, there's a distinction for us to recognize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that Allah is azizun and ghafoor. Allah is mighty and Allah is forgiving. In our society, my dear brothers, we live and we should recognize what Allah wants us to recognize. Amman kana mayitan fa'ahiyana. As regarding those who Allah has caused to die. Fa'ahiyana hu wa ja'alnahu lahu nuran yamshi ala al-awd. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says regarding those who Allah had considered dead meaning that they did not have their living but they do not have what iman they do not have the life of iman they do not have the spectacle the eyes the lens to see what allah wants them to see through the guidance that allah had sent he says they were in the condition of being dead but for ahiyahu then allah had given them life by giving them the words the guidance the prophet as a means for them to see this world to see yamshi nas, so that they can walk among men they can walk among this earth amongst people to recognize and see and distinguish what it means to have iman and not to be contented that any side we see things happening we want to go that way we want to go that way but do we not understand that Allah is saying, you are given Iman, you are given the light, you are given the foresight of guidance to see and recognize. But the biggest of all is do we really accept the guidance? It is before us, we have Iman, but do we take time to put our true intention, purpose and fikr behind the book of Allah, which is the guidance? The main objective of a believer is to follow that guidance to get the light. No, that light, that Quran in our life. For Allah subhanahu wa Kaman mathaluhu fi dhulumat. As regarding the one who is on the path of dhulumat, on wrong, on dhulm. Laysa khariji minha. That one, he can never come out of that path. He doesn't know where to go. He's lost. And Allah described this in Surah Al-Baqarah and other places in the chapter regarding the one who, when they receive, when the light is taken off and when they see and when they stop. It's described in Surah Al-Baqarah, but this is not the time for it. But to recognize what Allah describes in the Quran for a believer. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, when we do not understand and we understand a life that is different to this and we see things differently, what the society and the world is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Qul, say, O Muhammad, huwa al-qadir. He is Allah, the qadir, the one who has control over everything, who decrees everything. Ala an yaba'atha alaykum. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon them azaban min fawqihim. That Allah will send an azab from above them. That we see before our eyes that Allah would send things from the skies that would cause destruction on the land. So many things, the rain can come, cause flood, and so many havoc and destruction can happen before our eyes. Wind, all of these things, Allah can cause a hurricane, so much things can cause destruction from above us. And he says, وَمِن تَحْتِ arujul From amongst and beneath our feet, earthquakes, so many different things. And then he says, if Allah so wills, when people, when human beings 
Do not take the heed and the advice and the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they do not uphold the rights and the laws that Allah has governed for them to live their lives by. Then what is the other condition that happens? He says, O yalbisakum shay'an. And then he disguises and he says, Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala builds a disorder within the hearts of men. And when he builds this disorder, for you then you'll now see a war between men against men. He says, when the disorder comes, when people start to go against the orders of Allah, then Allah puts this into their heart. And then they fight amongst each other. Then they kill one another. Then for no reason they see value of anything else that Allah has put value in. But they see value in things that is of no use. And today, in our world that we live in, that we call what we call our homes, our places of worship, or places that we see around us when we go for business, for work, our communities that we share, we see that people, they live lives that they want to live in such a manner that they are aggressive to one another. And we ask ourselves, where this aggression is coming from? What is causing this aggression? And yet there are so many laws that are made. So many laws are made because of one thing to the next. We go continuously deviating and going away from it and going away from it. And we see ourselves falling in a, le a level of decadence and lowness as a human being. We go below the standard of what a human being should be. To the extent that we do not value or respect one another. And we infringe and we take away the rights of other human beings. And we see how many murders, rape, killing, robberies, everything rampant all over us. And no laws that are put before us by man who we put trust in to take care and protect. That's what we say to people, that these are the people we blame when everything goes wrong. You know, we put blame on everybody else. But we don't see that we are defying the orders of Allah. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran that he will put such a thing within the hearts of men that they will cause destruction amongst themselves when they fail to heed the words of Allah. No other words, even the best of our intellectual laws cannot stop what is happening. Because the one who has created us is telling us when we defy Allah's law, then note the consequences of it. It is not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love us, but Allah says, all of the differences, all of the distinctions, you note that I have made all of these things. They serve a purpose, they serve a cause. You, O oh man, you are created like this as well. Different color, different shapes. You are created as a human being, but you also have one purpose. When you fail that purpose, when you fail that objective, and you think to yourself that you are within your own rights to live on this earth, you must know that this earth is not your earth. This earth belongs to Allah. This world belongs to Allah. The time that you are living on this world, it belongs to Allah. The objective of all of this is for the sake of Allah. And every time you turn away from it, you are only making yourselves fall into what Allah has ordained in the Quran. It's a very difficult and very challenging situation before us, my dear brothers. It's very difficult for us to not see and understand where we have fallen. Because this law and this Quran is telling us this is not just about those who do not believe. But this is also for those who believe but yet not accept the laws of Allah in our lives. Because within our own relationship as believers, we have so many ikhtilaf, so many differences, so much warring amongst ourselves and fighting amongst ourselves. Because we do not accept the laws of Allah to guide our lives. And we could pinpoint everyone, that one is wrong, that one is right, and, we, and our lives is only filled on that. But not on the real principles of guidance. Not on the objective what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed in the Quran for us. And when we fail to recognize this, then what is before us is before us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this before us 
for us to recognize when Allah SWT describes in the Quran that we should not find ourselves here. We pray that Allah SWT does not put this into our hearts. Because if this becomes the conditioning of our heart, then what will be our condition? We'll see it that when the Muslims, when the Muslims would commit wrong, they would do the wrong actions. If we have Muslims who are selling drugs, if we have Muslims who are involved in illegal business, trade, whatever you have, the effects of it warns and it swarms into us, into our society, and we see killing amongst ourselves. And we say, well, why are they doing it? Because we have placed the disease for it to happen. And then we are telling ourselves, what is wrong? But when we stop our wrong, then it will stop. When we acknowledge and make tawbah, Allah who is telling us, He is azizun, He is mighty, and He is ghafoorun, He is forgiving. We have to acknowledge our wrongs, stop our wrongs and make tawbah. Turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah is forgiving, Allah understands us. Not that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not telling us that there is no room for change. There is room for change because this Quran is giving us room for change. Allah is giving us room for change. The problem is to acknowledge it and to make the change. It is to move away from those things that Allah says will cause us destruction. See, an ummah, we are brothers and sisters and a community together under the banner of this deen, al-Islam. And if we cannot recognize that we have to make this change, then what is going to happen? We cannot just throw aside everyone. But we must be able to identify and look at the wrong and say that this is wrong. We have to stop this brother from doing this. We have to not allow such things to happen before us. We have to make an action and a concerted effort. Whether it means that if I cannot do it physically, at least speak out against it. Or if we cannot even do that much, at least do salah, dua, some kind of supplication before Allah, asking Allah to remove such a condition from before us. We have to make an effort collectively. The Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us many indications of this condition that is before us. Abu Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala who says, قَالَ تَقُونُ فِتْنَةً نَائِمًا فِيهَا خَيْرٌ مِنْ يَقْضَانٍ the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa is telling us, you know, what is the price in relationship to a person compromising our deen? You know, we sell our deen for a small price. We sell our Quran for a small price. We sell the injunctions of Allah for a small price, for some petty gain of this world. But the ultimate consequence is what happens. We cannot ignore the words of Allah and live life and then want to return. And want to go back and return. No, we might falter from time to time, but we have to make the correct effort that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. My dear brothers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, and the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has also encouraged us as believing men and women. He says, from Nu'man ibn Bashir, he says, Yaqulu qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, A'dilu bayna awladikum. He says, practice the justice and the rights of the Quran amongst yourself. Awladikum amongst your children as well. Amongst your family members. A'dilu bayna abanaikum. And amongst your children, amongst your family, amongst your relatives. اَعْدِلُوا بَيْنَ أَبَنَائِكُمْ قَالَهَا فَلَافٌ He said this three times. He said this three times, emphasizing the importance of us to acknowledge that we should not fall astray. The importance of adhering to the words of Allah. He says, اَعْدِلُوا The whole world, every day you see people marching all over with candles. They want justice. What justice? What justice? You could do it over and over again, but if we do not fix our lives, then we'll never stop. The Quran is what is telling us is what is justice. Because no laws that have been made, and you can make the stiffest of laws, but if it is not adhered to by the nature of what Allah is saying in the Quran, then what are we going to get out of it? And this is not now, this is history, thousands of years. 
This was the nature and the condition of people over and over again. Only and not and only until they turn to Allah's law, then they only have satisfaction. But the nature of people is that there will always be some who will go on this direction and some who will go on the direction of the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It will always be like this. But the fitan will always grow. And in our time, the fitan will grow to the highest. In our time, in the last and the latter hour of the time before the day of judgment, it will grow even more than ever before. Because people have now attached themselves even more to this dunya, to this world. And as an attachment to it and a love for it, it means that the price of Allah's deen has been given up. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my dear brothers, give us all the strength to understand how important it is to hold on to our deen. And the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to us, Yatin ala nasi zaman, and the time will come that Adamiru ala dinihi kal qabidu ala jam. That to hold on to this deen is like to hold on to charcoals. And I'm sure we always hear this. We always hear this hadith. But do we really hold on to it? Are we prepared to make the sacrifice that is necessary to hold on to this deen? The Sahabas in the early days of propagating this deen al Islam in Makkah, to hold on to this deen, they were persecuted. They were butchered. Men, women alike. Beaten. But they never give up this deen. Today we have this deen. We have everything around us and all its aspects of this deen is before us. And all we are told to do is to hold on to this deen. Hold on to this deen. Make the sacrifice. Make the effort. Do not compromise it. We are not in that condition. But yet the whole world is seeing the difficulty what we are facing. But to hold on to it is what we as brothers and sisters of this deen have to recognize. It is not simple. It's not easy. We have to make the effort. May Allah give you and me the strength, inshaAllah, the heatman, the guidance, that we will be able to hold on to these words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which Allah has given us as the living miracle for our success in this life, as well as in the life of the hereafter. May Allah guide our hearts and protect us and safeguard us from the ills of our communities and our society at large. May Allah protect our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect our younger ones and keep them all on the straight path. Sadaqallah wa sadaqa rasulihil kareem wa akhidhan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.